Hello Power Users, Zbigniew Pułkowski here, I hope you had a great, great day and today we will be talking about switch function. And what is the switch function, Where sh when should we use it, what is the differences between switch function and if function. We will do a couple of easy examples, we will also set variable with switch function, something which probably you did not think about, but it's also possible. We will do also a colors with switch function and we will talk some aspects of switch function which you should you you should always remember. So without further ado, Zbigniew Fukowski in and let's start. Okay, so here I have a gallery with some data with the names, the IDs, etc. and the button which we will look at the end. And what I want to do is to create a simple switch function which we will use to determine the color based on the ID. Just like it's, it's here already. So if I create the correct color then this will be red, this will be yellow, this will be green, yellow, green, uh, red of course. So let's start. For starters, I've uh, created the label. This is the just the label and we have the the field property in this label. So in this field field property, I want to create a simple switch which should just change the color of this background of the label. Okay, so let's start. First of all, this is the switch function. Let's open parentheses and in the switch value we are addressing on what part of our data, our, our solution we will be working. This will be the same for all the results. So we cannot, we cannot state that if I, ID of this item equals one, then this will be red. But if name of the, of the field is like Cuba, then we want to have a green option. No, we cannot do it. But we can do it in the match results. So we can also nest other functions in there. Okay, so our switch value can be, for example, this item ID, which, which is this number, of course but it could also be transformed if you want. We can go with the, I don't know, text functionality and then, uh, then transform it. So you can use any other functions in the first argument of switch as long as those uh, should be applied to each matching value and each result. Okay, great. So we have this item ID and first matching value is one, which is red. So this is the, the match value parameter, as you see, this is the second parameter and if this parameter is one, then we want to set a color red. I won't use the RGB color schema, I just will type red and this will be enough. So we can, if we close this parenthesis, you can see that the red is, is also there why the black is in the other fields because if there is no match in our switch function then it will trigger blank and in case of colors it will be just black so black will be null will be blank okay so we have another id which is two and then we can go with yellow and we have matching id three and it will be green cool if I close the parentheses, it should work instantly. Yeah, it does. So as you can see, it copied all the exact functionality as I had. So this is working. Of course, if I, I do want to have a default results, this will be the default result parameters. So after each match res uh, value and match result, no matter how many there is there, you can have an optional parameter, which is default result. So in here I can go with, with black if there is no match. But we have all, all the matches, so there is no black color here, but it could be done optionally. Now 
what is uh, what would be probably shocking for you at least some of you you don't you can nest other functions in this switch function so if i want to have a special results for example if this item name which is equal let's go with kuba now let's go with ufa then i don't want to have yellow i want to have orange or mm, no orange is okay orange and else i want to have yellow so that means that ufa should be orange and the duda should keep it should keep the yellow color let's see if that that is true yeah that is true i've successfully nested the if function in the switch function so this is something which is which is great it means that i don't have to evaluate always on the same thing and always only on one source because the basic switch is one source so i i cannot check the other field in this switch unless i'm checking this for all the matches but i can trigger it in any specific and in any specific result to nest other functions and i can nest it and nest it uh, nest it again etc this is possible so great okay so this is our first and easiest example with the yellow orange we have nested functions I can also uh, create a switch function on the bottom to create a variable. I've already made an example, so we won't lose the time for coding. And what is there? What is here? Here I want to create a variable switched based on the switch function and this item ID. If the ID is one, then this variable should be true. If ID is, is two, let's go for now with false this will be false and if the id is three then again true if id is is not there than false but we can delete this because we have no such ids and we already have the function rolling let's go with some colon at the end it's a good practice and let's run it okay so based on this i have a label here which show the variable switched and it show if variable switch sorry if variable switch is true or false that means that this is uh, this variable uh, variable is boolean but what happened if in the switch uh, variable i for i i just use it uh, i just use the data type of boolean but but in any circumstance i want to use just the different variable uh, type like text so this data type is text and this data type is boolean so variable switch if each if it's boolean then this should be true and it is true the variable is boolean because i've pressed the the button with the with the id2 but uh, if i press the uh, sorry with the id1 but if i press the button with the id2 then then what happens to this variable let me sorry let me go, go back to the button and in the case of id2 i should already created the data type text which did not happen. See? Uh, this data type is ignoring the, the text val uh, var value because it's not a text variable, it's Boolean variable. We can check it in the variables. We can go with the variable switch, which is a type Boolean and it's equal true okay this is this is something probably which you, you may find weird but actually what happens is that the variable itself it 
took the value which it had at the first switch uh, much reveled. So if I change this to to result and I will just try to hack it and and to, we will use the true but with the and the double quota which means that this variable is text now see the data type is the text and I use the button what happened to the variable let's go with the variable and the variable switched is is type text so the boolean part is false because variable switch is not true and variable switch is not false hmm. the variable switch is blank that's interesting aha uh -huh, true yeah so you can see it's working probably the first time there was some kind of mismatch due to change of this variable type so while switching the variables, we we learned that we can try to uh, to use this variable uh, to use different type of switch variable, but it will result in in mandatory use of the variable type as the as the first matching value, no matter if this button will produce the second value or third, it will always match the data type. The first value so you have to be careful when you are setting these switch variables just not to not to use different data types I, it's it's uh you should be careful about this but this this is what you can do with the switch okay so we've made two examples one was the colors second was the was the button which in which we created the variable we created also the the calls with, with the switch function now i want to talk about something which is important why should we use switch function and why we should we should not use the if nested if function i know that some power platform celebrities like shake shane young <laughs> is using only if function but I believe this is the wrong approach because switch function is easier maintainable because if I just want another another switch part for example I would be creating id equal 4 and then something something else this is this is the end I've just created another switch switch part but if I want to create an if then I will have to nest that if in the in the second if so if something uh, then do something else do something else and in the else section i would have to repeat the number of times the uh, i want to the results so i will have to create four nested ifs if i want to to have four four results that's it's not only complicated to maintain but it's also less readable code the lower performance in case for example you are using a data source which you are patching or you are using the lookup this can match up into really decent amount of times so you should always be mindful when to use switch i try to avoid using if if i have more than two uh two step ifs and if i know that this could be also extendable in the future i always keep my if small and use the switch instead so this is something you should be aware of but uh, sometimes the people told that hey but i need the ifs uh, with different kind of values to to iterate on but hey you can I, i've just show you that you could use if in the switch function so you, then it will avoid the so-called greatest downside side of switch functions basically switch switch is better in most of the cases you know in which you have many results be mindful aware and hope you learned some things big new out remember like subscribe etc if you like the content i have